Welcome to the kingdom. Hello, welcome to Sila Moments with Pastor Fred Moore. I am your guest host, Godson Xavier. Again, thank you to the man and woman of God for entrusting me with this podcast. I thank you again to my wife and our son for your love and support. And without any further ado, I want to go ahead and start prayer, and then we'll go into the subject matter. So, Father God, thank you. Thank you for ministering to me, Lord God. What you have poured in me, I can pour out into your people now. It's not by my might nor by my strength, but by you, Lord God. So touch, Lord God. Touch that person, that man, that woman, Lord God, that needs to hear what you have placed in me to give out to them. So I thank you, Father God, for the people being receptive and receiving your word, Lord God. Not mine, but your word. In your son Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So we want to continue with the seal I thought that we've been speaking on, unexpected. The one that God chose, not you. So we was reading previously from 1 Corinthians 2, 9, the NIV version. But I love the message so much that I want to go from the message. So we're going to read 1 Corinthians 2, 9, the message version. And it reads, that's why, this, that's why we have this scripture text. No one has ever seen or heard anything like this. No one ha- never so much as imagined anything quite like it. What God has arranged for those who love him. And then we was talking about in previous podcasts about how we had another scripture that goes along the lines of 1 Corinthians 2, 9. And that was Jeremiah 29, 11. And it reads, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So that right there was a blessing to know all on its own, because when we was talking about how in Exodus 2, 1 through 10, about how the beginnings of Moses' life, that exactly coincides with it, because Moses was born during the time when the Pharaoh of Egypt was trying to kill all the Hebrew baby boys that were born. But yet somehow his mother was able to hide him. And not only that, but she was able to put him in a basket and send him down the Nile. And I can only imagine a mother having to give up her baby because she couldn't see him die at at her in her own hands. And not only because of her willingness to give up that thing, not only did God protect him and kept him, but he returned him back and she got paid for nursing him and bringing him up while allowing her son the opportunity to get the best education and the best life you can have living in the palace. I mean, how wonderful is that? I mean, mean, just really think about that. How wonderful is that? that but we're going to read about some of the things that were going on with Moses we read about what uh, through 1 through 10 but as we get to verses 11 and 12 that's when it gets interesting and we start to see about these flaws of Moses but yet how God was still able to use him so we read in verse 11 one day after Moses had grown up he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. Looking this way and that way and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. So now, again, Moses doing things on his own might. He already had did something wrong. He had killed a man. Not because he had killed somebody, but because he was beating somebody. So he went above and beyond. So now think about that. God used somebody who the first thing that we read about as him as a young man was committing murder. But yet God said, I still can do marvelous things with him. Now, granted. I think it's safe to say that Moses' heart was in the right place and wanted to protect his own people. But the way that he went about it was definitely not the right way. 
And sometimes that's how we as God's people are. We try to do things with the right intentions, but we're moving out of position. And truth be told, if some of us were in God's position, what's the likelihood that we will use somebody that had committed murder? That's why we have to glorify and thank God that we aren't God and that he is God. Because even with our flaws and faults, God still can use us. But we also continue on and we're reading about some other things. I mean, Moses had a stuttering problem as well, or a speech impediment for those out there. But also he had a little temper. And we read about that and further down in Exodus. But God still said, despite all of that, I can use you. His first encounter with God, like true encounter with God, was in the burning bush when we read in Exodus 3. Uh, 3 and 10 where we talk where God actually speaks to him and tells him to take off his sandals and he instructs him about what he's going to do through him and of course like any of us Moses is like who me Lord I, I, I can't speak like like are you sure you want to use me and God's like are you serious you think I don't know that already but God you don't remember what I did back before God is like I am all seeing and all knowing you think I don't know that as well stop trying to fight with me about all the things that you've done and just focus on all the things that you are going to do for my perfect will and for my glory so for any of us out there please don't allow some of the things you've done in the past don't allow some of the handicaps or inadequate things or, as you feel, not qualifying things that you might possess stop you from allowing you to be used by God. Because no matter what nobody around you says, God can use the tallest or the smallest or however the youngest or oldest person, your age, your size, your race does not matter in the sight of God. God can use you no matter what. So please do yourself a favor. And whenever you have those thoughts, say to yourself, not thy will, but his will be done. Because as we continue on reading, we're going to see how God, with all the things that had Moses had done, was still using him. To not only to free his people, but to lead them to the promised land. So again, reach out to us through our email at kgcc96 at gmail.com. Again, that's kgcc96 at gmail.com. Or you can reach out to us through our webpage of kgccatx.org. If you want to check us out online, we are live streaming on our webpage, on our Facebook, and on our YouTube. But if you are locally in the area here in Round Rock, Texas, come and stop in. You know, we promise you will be ministered to. You will be surrounded by people who truly love God. We're all X-Men, X this or X that. But what we all have in common is a love and a reverence for God and the things of God. And our shepherds, I promise you, they will be able to give you a word that will help you. Even when you don't think it's a word that you need, you'll be surprised. So love, peace, and blessings to all you again. And until our next podcast, thank you.